We are back with our season reviews today. We are talking about everyone's favorite uh, fun uncle of the team. We're talking about Jacob Varacek on today's Locked On Blue Jackets. Locked On Blue Jackets, your daily podcast on the Columbus Blue Jackets. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Good morning, uh, good afternoon, good evening. I don't know what time you're listening to this, but uh, welcome to Lockdown Blue Jackets, part of the Lockdown Podcast Network. We are your team every day. I am, as always, your host, Jay Foster, here to bring you the news, the stories, uh, the trials, the tribulations of your favorite team and mine, the Columbus Blue Jackets. Before we get started, I want to thank everyone for making this your first listen of the day every day. Locked on Blue Jackets is free and available on all podcast platforms and also over on YouTube. So uh, if you would like to consume this podcast in audio in uh, video form, you can do it over there. I have just noticed that my uh, overhead light behind me is wonky. Uh, Hopefully that's not too much of a distraction for you. It is going to distract me for the entire episode, though. So uh, (laughs) we'll, uh, we'll just move on from that. Like I said at the top of the show, I am going to be talking about Jacob Voracek. Today, uh, because we're continuing our season in review, we've only got a couple of forwards left, and then we can move on to the defensemen. But uh, this is going to be a a fun one, I think. Um, Jake Voracek, kind of a surprise addition to the team. I think it's probably the the best way to put it. Um, we heard whispers last off season that the Blue Jackets were thinking of moving on from Cam Atkinson, which was a big surprise and. A, concern honestly um and then it turns out it's cam atkinson for jake voracek who was drafted here back in 2007 i think um yep 2007 former seventh overall pick for the blue jackets uh really really good player one of philadelphia's best players for a long time honestly um so i have really enjoyed watching Voracek this season. Um, I think it's a trade that looking back after the season is is done. It was the perfect trade for both teams. Um, I'm going to have Rachel and Ross, Rachel and Russ from uh, Locked on Flyers at some point, and we'll talk about the trade and how, you know, a season in it's how it's shaping up for both teams. And, uh, but from a, from a Blue Jacket perspective, I think it's a pretty. It's been a pretty good trade, honestly. Um, we'll talk about the trade in a little bit more detail, but uh, let's start off with looking just kind of at his season in general, uh, because he led the team in scoring. Which, okay, maybe you don't want thirty-two-year-old uh, Jacob Voracek to be leading the team in scoring, but he had. <laughs> here's the the funny bit. Honestly, he had six goals. He had 56 assists. Um, you simply cannot make him score goals. You can't make him shoot the puck. It's very, very funny. Um, but 56 assists is uh, a really, really good amount of assists. And uh, he was one of the, the best players on this team for a very long time. Um, that uh, That final assist actually was his 800th career point which is pretty cool um in just over a thousand games he got to play his 1000th game with columbus which i also thought was a uh, really cool and a really nice touch um but beyond that i think just the the thing about varacek to me anyway is you can't understate the effect that i think he's had on the room um i think he is a big part of why the you know the uh, the end of season interviews the the exit day interviews um, a lot of players talked about how great the room was this season how much how they had so much fun playing hockey this is the best you know some of them said like this is the best year I've ever had of hockey um, and you know a lot of them probably were talking about career years and points and stuff but a lot of them also talked about how good the team is and how much fun they had with this specific set of players. And um, I think Jacob Varacek is a, is a big part of that. He's really, really good 
in the room. Uh, yeah, he gets a little bit snarly with media sometimes, but like that feels that's fine. I'm okay with that. Uh, I think sometimes you need to get a little bit snarly with media. Um, but beyond that, I think just a really good teammate, really good stabilizing veteran presence, honestly. Um, and this is not to disparage Cam Atkinson because I really like Cam Atkinson. I think he's a, a really good player. But I heard rumblings that uh, he did not get on super well with a lot of the younger guys on the team. Um, and not necessarily a divide, but I think there was maybe some some tension there, especially regarding his relationship with Tortorella and the young players' with relationship with Tortorella. I think he liked Tortorella a lot. And the other players didn't, and I think that maybe caused a little bit of, of conflict. So, like, obviously, removing Tortorella from the situation is not um, means that you can't really look at him and be like, "Well, yeah, obviously, Voracek hated Tortorella because he'd never played under him." But that's that's beside the point. Um, I just wanted to kind of make the note that Voracek is a is a veteran player on a team of children that uh, I think was a really good stabilizing. Uh, Stabilizing force for them, both on and off the ice. Uh, we're going to talk about that in a little bit more detail in just a minute. But first, I've got to tell you about Bet Online because it is the fastest and easiest way to check in on all of your betting needs. You can find all your favorite sports and events at the number one online source for odds, lines, and games. Find reviews and news of every league, including Major League Baseball, NFL, NBA, NHL, combat sports, esports, even golf. Uh, actually, I think. NFL training started literally yesterday, so uh, you can bet on the NFL games pretty darn soon. But online continues to be the top online resource for all your sports wagering information for live in-game betting, scores, podcasts. Uh, they've got you covered for everything that you might need. So head to bet online today or use your mobile device to learn more about the action happening today because bet online is where the game starts. So the other thing about Jacob Varchek, uh, in terms of his kind of uh, veteran leadership, I guess, is again getting to put him on a line with two younger players. Let the younger players just kind of go wild, and uh, Varchek is there to kind of calm it down a little bit. I think um, I really, I really, really liked the Chinikov Cylinder Varchek line when it was a thing, um, I think that was a really good line. Uh, and honestly, I wouldn't hate a Johnson Sillinger Varacek line now that they've ruined my hopes of a Johnson Sillinger Bjorkstrand line by sending Bjorkstrand to Seattle. That's beside the point. We're not going to get, <laughs> we're not going to get emotional about all of Bjorkstrand again on this podcast. It's fine. Um, beyond that, I think, uh, yeah, a, a Varacek with Sillinger and Johnson could be, could be a lot of fun. Uh, Johnson and Voracek could just kind of get the puck to Sillinger and watch as he scores 30 goals. Like, that's that seems like a fun time to me, honestly. Um, and I think that's a really strong second line behind uh, Gaudreau, Lyde, and probably Boone Jenner, honestly. Um, but again, we've talked about it before. The center does not matter on that line. Um, and honestly, to a certain extent, I don't think a center matters on a line with Voracek either. Um, as long as you've got a guy that, win, that can win face-offs and a guy that can score. I uh, I don't necessarily think that you need someone to drive the play because I think Voracek drives the play pretty well on his own. Um, and does it while basically passing the puck to literally everyone and refusing to shoot it. Just, again, very... Very funny. Um, in terms of, again, I want to go back to the trade a little bit because um, looking at Cam Atkinson's stats for the season, uh, they both had pretty good seasons. Um, I believe Cam Atkinson led the Flyers in scoring. Obviously, Voracek led the um, Blue Jackets in assists and also points. Uh, with Philadelphia, he had 23 goals. 27 assists for 50 points. Uh, not quite his career high, but it's the most goals he scored in a season in uh, since 2018-19. And that's what the Flyers needed. It's what the Blue Jackets needed in terms of Varchek's assists. Like, I think acquiring a guy like Line A, and obviously the, the time they had Bjorkstrand, made Cam Atkinson not obsolete, 
But I think if they could have gotten a playmaker and swapped a play, uh, swapped one of their scorers out for a playmaker, then they would get more out of their actual scorers. And I think, hey, it, it worked. It worked pretty well for the Flyers. They got the goal scorer that they needed. The Flyers have really, really struggled with offense in uh, previous seasons. And the Blue Jackets got the playmaker to play with line A that they needed. Um, obviously, they then went and got. Johnny Gaudreau this offseason. So Voracek is kind of been relegated to the second line, not necessarily playing with line A, but I think put him with a guy like Sillinger. And I think that could be really, really fun. Put another guy on the other wing that can round those two out. And it's that's looking like a pretty good top six for the Blue Jackets. And that's not even getting into, you know, the Jack Rosovics, the Gus Nyquists, the Kirill Marchenkos of it all. So it's it's looking exciting. Um, but in terms of specifically Voracek, I think he... Emotionally, this trade was rough because I really liked Cam Atkinson, both as a player and also as a person. I have a Cam Atkinson jersey that now is obsolete because I only buy jerseys of players that get traded, but that's, uh, that's beside the point. Um on a on a logical like sports level, this was a really really good trade, um, and I think it's hard to be like, hey, we definitely won this trade because I don't think that there is a clear winner and loser. I think both teams won, and both teams got exactly what they needed. So, uh, congratulations to Philadelphia for getting their goal scorer in Cam Atkinson. Uh, congratulations to the Blue Jackets for getting a playmaker in Jake Voracek. Uh, both exactly what the team needed, and both performed extremely well on two pretty bad teams this season. Columbus wasn't a pretty bad team. Columbus was fine. Um, the Flyers were not great. So Cam Atkinson was a very good player on a bad team. Jake Voracek was a very good player on a slightly less bad team. But my point remains the same. Both teams got what they needed. Both trades were good. Uh, both trades, both sides of the trade were good. Uh, in a minute... We are going to talk a little bit more about Jack Voracek and uh, what I could kind of see for him next season. And we're also going to look at uh, his cap hit and also we're going to give him a, a grade on the season that is coming up next on Locked on Blue Jackets. So let's let's uh, let's start off with the, the contract because it was one of the ones I was looking at to potentially get moved to make room for Patrick Laine. Obviously that didn't happen, but Jacob Varacek is making eight and a quarter of a million dollars for the next two seasons. Uh, that will take him up to his, uh, he will be 34 when that contract finishes. Um, in fairness, he is still very good. Uh, even, at, you know, his, his extremely advanced age as the NHL seems to seems to think but um i'm not this is not a contract that's going to age poorly i don't think like is 8.25 a little bit too much especially considering you know it's just a little bit under what line is getting it's about a million and a half less than what johnny gaudreau is getting like there's a lot of big contracts on this team like uh i think four players make over eight million dollars um, and those four players take up 30, 42% of the cap. So it's it's not ideal, but I'm not upset with the Voracek contract necessarily. Um, I think another thing to do with uh, trade is Atkinson is signed for a year longer. So his cap hit is slightly less, but he's signed... Uh, his cap hit is quite a little bit less, actually. He's making 5.875 for the next three years, and he's a year older as well. Um, so I think that was maybe a, a consideration that, okay, they're going to pay a little bit more for the next two seasons, but then he'll be off the books. Um, so that's obviously with... Uh, let me pull up the Blue Jackets cap situation again. With... Uh, Johnson and Sillinger coming off their entry levels and Jack Rostovic needing a new contract and Jake Bean and Nick Blankenberg 
both needing new contract in that year, um, having eight million come off the books is uh, is ideal instead of having to somehow figure out how to make five million of cap space appear from somewhere. So uh, it's like I said, it's it's not a bad, not a bad cap hit. Could be better, could be a lot worse. Um, you know, it's not. It is not going to hamstring the Blue Jackets, I don't think. Uh, and maybe he'll resign for, you know, a couple more years at a lower cap hit just to, again, continue to be that veteran presence. Uh, overall, for Jake Voracek, I'm going to give him an A this season. Honestly, he came in, he did exactly what was expected of him, and then some. Uh, did he score a bunch of goals? No. Did he score a bunch of assists? Yes. Did he stabilize the power play? Yes. Did he provide uh, veteran leadership to the young players? Yes. Like, would I like Jake Voracek to maybe hit 10 goals next season? Like, yes, absolutely. But I'm not going to be mad about it if he only has another 55 assist season or whatever it is, 56 assist season. Like, I think it's a stupid thing to be mad about because goals are not the be-all and end-all. And obviously, if he's getting the assists, then somebody else is getting the goals. So the goals are happening regardless. Um, so people are like, man, you can't just live on assists. I'm like, well, clearly he can because he's doing the assists and everyone else is scoring. So it's, uh, it's a silly thing to be mad about. Excuse me while I adjust my hat. But um, yeah, more than more than happy with Jake Voracek. Same again next season would be perfect. Uh, maybe even a more successful season, question mark. Uh, I think the team is better than it was last season immediately. Obviously, adding Goudreau immediately makes the team a lot better. Losing Bjorkstrand is not ideal, but it is what it is. But yeah, I could see maybe a six, maybe 70 or 80 points for Voracek this season. Like... Is that a hot take? It might be a hot take. Maybe that's one of my hot takes for, for this offseason is 80 points for Jake Voracek. But I think he can do it. I think the team can do it. So we'll uh, we'll have to keep, keep an eye on that. Uh, and that's kind of all I've got for you today. Uh, tomorrow, we are going to be looking at Jack Rostovic. That's our final forward for the season review. So we'll be looking at him. We'll be looking at his new contract. Uh, how he can step up next season. Uh, we'll give him a grade for this season, all of those fun things, uh, unless any kind of breaking Blue Jackets news happens, which I'm still kind of eyeing up Yamaka Kleinen. I don't know if he's done this offseason yet, and I am suspicious of everyone's favorite Bond villain, Finn. So we'll we'll keep an eye on that situation, but hopefully nothing big. We can talk about Jack Rostovic tomorrow, which is good, because I like talking about Jack Rostovic. Um I've been Jay Foster. You can find me on Twitter at underscore Jacob Foster, J-A-K-O-B-F-O-R-S-T-E-R. You can find this podcast at L-O underscore Blue Jackets. If you have comments, questions, criticisms, you can email me at LockedOnBlueJackets at gmail.com. Uh, we'll be doing a mailbag in uh, in a couple of days. So if you've got questions for that, then uh, email me at me on Twitter, jump in the dms whatever uh, re uh, respond to this youtube video if you have comment if you have questions so i will uh, get those all answered probably on friday uh but until then thank you once again for making this your first listen of the day every day and stay locked on <laughs>